We spend a lot of our time trying to control everything. And I think nature helps us recognize that we are not in control at all. And that's okay. You know, things are going to change. Things are going to evolve. Things are unknown. And if we can stay grounded within that, and I think nature helps you do that, I think that enables us to feel calmer and, and less stressed and to be more creative. Do you ever feel trapped within the same four walls? Do you feel disconnected from the natural world and wish you had the time and opportunity to experience all the joys of getting into nature? And do you need to get a bit of perspective on your life away from your screen to work out what's really going on for you? Intuitively, we know that we're often at our happiest when we're outside in a green or a blue space, hanging out in a natural environment. I know that I do my best thinking when up a mountain, walking around a lake or just sitting under a tree. And with the hustle and bustle of everyday life, unless you have a dog or a serious Strava habit, many of us can go for days without experiencing anything of the great outdoors. And then we become trapped in our familiar man-made environments, often sitting down in front of screens. And many of us find that we can't even spare five minutes to get outside to recharge. Now, there's mounting evidence to show that regularly getting outside into nature can have a profound effect on our mental health, so much so that even looking at a picture of a plant has beneficial effects. So this week on the podcast, I'm joined by Henry Stevenson, one of our Shapes trainers and a leadership development coach who specialises in coaching in nature. We talk about why getting outside into nature can be so transformative, and we explore how we can take it one step further and use the amazing metaphors available in nature to get some insights into our own lives, to get some perspective and to get unstuck. You don't need to take an extended break backpacking through a rainforest to get this inspiration. Even a five minute nature break in the local park can help shift things for you. So join us to find out the overwhelming case for scheduling in breaks in nature into your day. How to use your time in nature to answer some of the bigger questions you might have. And join us to find out some simple ways to start connecting with nature, even if you're stuck in a city or just too busy. Welcome to You Are Not A Frog, the podcast for doctors and busy professionals in healthcare and other high stress jobs who want to beat burnout and work happier. I'm Dr. Rachel Morris, a former GP, now working as a coach, speaker and specialist in resilience at work. Like frogs in a pan of slowly boiling water, many of us have found that exhaustion and stress are slowly becoming the norm. But you are not a frog. You don't have to choose between burning out or getting out. In this podcast, I'll be talking to friends, colleagues and experts all who have an interesting take on this and inviting you to make a deliberate choice about how you will live and work. Are you a leader in health and social care with a busy day job who's worried about the level of stress and burnout in your team and wants to get a resilient, thriving and happy team but without burning out yourself? I know what it's like to work in an overwhelmed team and be one crisis away from not coping During my coach training, I came across a set of resilience and productivity principles and tools based on coaching and neuroscience, which I wish I'd known about 20 years ago when I first qualified as a doctor. I've put them together to form the Shapes Toolkit, a program for leaders and their teams who want to feel calmer, beat stress and work happier. We've been teaching the Shapes Toolkit course face-to-face and online to doctors and other healthcare teams around the country. And it's made a huge difference to the way people approach their lives and their work. We wanted to make this training and the Shapes resources available to busy leaders who may not have time to attend a day-long course, but still want to learn how to use the Shapes tools with their teams. So we created the Resilient Team Academy, an online membership which gives busy leaders in healthcare all the training and tools they need to beat burnout themselves and get a happy and thriving team. You'll get webinars, training, mini videos and loads of other resources at your fingertips. You can sign up for the Resilient Team Academy individually or as an organisation. We only open our doors twice a year, so do join while you can. Find out more by clicking on the link in the show notes. It's really great. So welcome onto the podcast, Henry Stevenson. Hi, Henry. 
Hello. Now, Henry is one of our Shapes trainers. She's a leadership and personal development coach. And Henry, I think you have a particular focus on confidence, leadership, resilience, and well-being. And the reason we've got Henry on today is because we wanted to talk about the power of nature and getting out into nature. And Henry, I know that you're really passionate about coaching and using nature in a as a bit of a different space for reflection and creativity and making progress with things that we're stuck on. So we're going to get into that and how it works, et cetera, et cetera. But first of all, how on earth did you get into the whole coaching in nature and, and going in nature thing? Because you've got a background in l and communications, working in an office, all that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah, do you know, it's funny, actually, it, you just saying that reminds me. I, I remember when I was traveling in my 20s, and at that stage, I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life. And I remember somebody saying to me, you know, what do you want to do? And I said, I don't know, I don't know, but I know that I don't want to work in an office. And then I proceeded to spend the next 20 years of my life working in an office which has been great and given me invaluable experience. But I did spend some time, about three years when I worked for a charity where we took young people that were not in education and employment. It was a youth development program and we take them outdoors to the Peak District and do outdoor residentials. And that was probably when I was first introduced to personal development and also introduced to just the power of nature and really kind of connecting, connecting into nature and being in a different space. However, I then didn't do anything around that for an, another sort of 10 years. And I've been uh, coaching and training for the last 10 years about that. And in the last two years, I've started to work on my own and have my own business, which has given me a lot more flexibility. And in that, I have now started to go outside a lot more and I think the pandemic has also helped that plus we've got a dog so that also helps and by doing that I've realized that there's such a big part of me that is connected to nature and that I really feel passionate about it and I notice that the conversations I have with other people when I'm walking with them are different than when we're on a screen the conversations I have with myself which sounds a bit strange but my thinking is different when I'm out in nature and so I'd started to notice this and then began to think, how can I incorporate that more into my work and how can I try this out in the coaching conversations that I have? And so I'm, I'm doing a lot more of that now. And the feedback from what I hear from people that I've been working with is really powerful. It, it is just a different space that helps us think in a different way and helps us feel calmer. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of research around, isn't there, about well-being and nature. And I think that there's one bit of research that said even having a picture of a plant on your wall <laughs> helps helps your mental health like even a picture now I'm looking around my office I've got a a fern which I bought and I forgot to water so it's half brown I've actually got a fern behind me as well but don't tell anybody that's fake <laughs> and but I have the most amazing view out onto a park and it's wonderful I have a friend who got a dog and every morning she has to get up and go out and I said, well, isn't that a bit of a hassle? And she said, no, it's absolutely vital to her because it's where her, all her thinking occurs, really. And I don't know if that's the dog or the nature. I'm, I'm guessing it's the nature rather than the dog, but it's the dog getting her out the door, right? Yeah, exactly. I think a dog does help. However, what I would say is that the times that I go out into nature on my own without the dog are even more powerful. Because even with the dog, you're sort of distracted. There's something else you're aware of and looking after but when I go on my own, and what I noticed actually as well recently, more recently in the last sort of few months, is that when I was going for walks, I was listening to a podcast like this. I was training a friend. I was using it as a space to catch up on some things that I hadn't done, you know, sitting in front of a screen. But actually, I've changed that now. I always put my phone on silent uh, where possible. And well, not always. It's not, I'm not 100% perfect in this, but, but as much as I can. I turn my phone off and if I go without the dog, which I try and do a couple of times a week, then I just slow down completely uh, and I'm not distracted. And I have much more, I have much better thinking in that moment than I do when I'm kind of distracted by the dog or whatever. But you're right. I mean, the dog just helps. It gives me a purpose, a, a reason to get out every day. So I'm interested, if you were to set out on a walk on your own, would you 
at the beginning of the walk go, what do I need to think about now? And, you know, is there anything I need to solve and ask yourself some questions? Or would you just set off and see what occurs to you? Well, I do both, really. I think sometimes, I think if you're not used to going out a lot, uh, and obviously I'm a coach, so I'm always thinking of questions and I'm quite kind of familiar with being in, in that sort of space. But I think initially, just the first thing that I sometimes I do is just get to get out and just pause, actually, before I even start walking. To just stand there and just take, you know, 30 seconds to breathe and to listen to the birds a bit, to just notice my feet on the ground, just to engage my senses. And then... Sometimes I'll see, you know, if there's an aunt, if there's a question that pops up or something that I, that's really on my mind that I want to think through, and if it is, then I'll I'll think right, you know, I'll take that take that question for a walk, so to speak. But other times I th- I think it's just about getting out and and seeing what you're drawn to in nature. I think that always offers up some some insights for ourselves of not putting just seeing, you know, just going with the flow and seeing where it takes you. Mm-hmm. I love that pause at the beginning to, to orient yourself. I guess a lot of us, when we are walking in nature, we might have like 20 minutes on a lunch break or we're quickly whizzing around, but just that 30 second pause to, yeah, connect with yourself and I guess set an intention a little bit as well. Yeah. Because I find if I just start off walking, my, I'm so distracted by all the stuff that's been going on and I end up going off on this and off, off on that thought. I also love the idea of taking a question for a walk. So thinking maybe to yourself, what is it I'm stuck on at the moment? Yeah, exactly. And I think there's something about listening to your body a bit. So we spend so much time in our heads. I do. I spend a lot of time in my head. And actually, I was reading something recently. There's a guy called David Pearl, and he talks about us having this ancient human navigation system within us our our bodies and actually so much of our behaviors and what we do are driven by how we feel and you know which in terms of driven by the thoughts that we have create the feelings that we have that then create the behaviors that we have and so i think our bodies have a lot to tell us about what's going on for us so in that bit of pausing i try and just check in with you know what, what am i feeling in my body so it might be, you know, I'm feeling a bit, a bit fluttery in my chest area. You know, I might feel a bit of, of nerves or something or a bit of stress tightness. Or it might be something in the tummy. Often for me, it's in the tummy. <clears throat> or it might be in your shoulders. And then I think it's just being curious of what, what, what is that? And then taking that with you and seeing, seeing what comes up. Because I think we then get out of our heads and we, get, we can tap into our intuition more. And I think our, our bodies have a lot to tell us. And the same, and you know, if you do have a question, you're thinking about, you know, how to solve a, a challenge. Again, just getting out of your head, just thinking about what your intuition is saying. I mean, you know, we always say, don't we? I've just got this gut feel about something. It's not a thought. It's just a sort of gut feeling. So yeah, I think that can be, and I think just nature just helps you do that. Yes. I can imagine just spending some time sitting with your intuition and your gut feeling. I think as well, there is that thing about getting out into a different environment. Because if I was to sit in my office here, you know, I know exactly what my office looks like. I know there's a plant in the corner, a couple of posters on the wall and a big bookshelf. Mm. So that isn't going to give me much inspiration. But I guess if I'm walking around the lake near me, I see a swan taking off, for example. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. And then it takes quite a bit of effort to get themselves off the lake and then suddenly they're flying and suddenly it's completely effortless and you automatically start, well, I do anyway. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm entirely normal. <laughs> Going, oh, that's just like life, isn't it? You know, some things are hard at the beginning and then it's soaring and what in my life is feeling like hard like that right now and what is feeling like I'm actually soaring and it's cruising. I mean, is this the sort of thing we're talking about? I, definitely. And I, if I was, you know, on that walk and I saw that swan, I might see it in a completely different way. I might not even notice it. But the fact that you notice it 
and then you're able to make some meaning out of what you've just witnessed, can tell you a little bit about, you know, what's going on for you. So, and I think in co- when I coach people out, outside, and we definitely use the metaphors and that, that nature kind of presents. But I had one in, it was in October, and I was walking along, and it was really windy, and it was raining, and I, and I felt like, and actually in my mind, in the internal weather, in my head, was pretty stormy. I felt like I was being buffeted, buffeted by the wind. I just wasn't in a particularly great headspace. So I was on this walk, and I saw this tree that was just swaying in, in, the, tr- in, in the wind. And I looked at it, and I was kind of drawn to it. And what it helped me do was just notice that actually in all of that kind of being blown around the place and all the chaos of that, there was something really strong. You know, its trunk was there, solid, grounded, rooted. And, and it was just, and it really just helped me remind myself that even if my mind is a bit stormy and crazy and I don't feel in control and all of those things, I can come back to grounding myself and to more strength from within. And I think, you know, that can just be like a two minute experience that you can have. It is just that reminder to kind of come out of your head and go, no, okay, I've got this. And, and we do get blown about. And the chaos, you know, sometimes I think with nature, you know, the messiness of life, the chaos of life is reflected in nature. You know, autumn, all the leaves coming down, there's all that chaos going on. But actually, that's, that, that composting, that, that decomposition is... It provides protection for for animals, for nutrients to grow, for something great that happens at this time of year. Well, when spring comes, so I think there's just lots there's lots of lessons from nature, and it's just completely individual. You know, it just depends what's going on for you on that day. You might notice something that yeah, just gives you some a new insight. I think the seasonality of nature is very very powerful. I think as as professionals, particularly in high stress jobs, you expect yourself to get to a certain level of perfor- performance and just carry on and carry on and carry on. And then if things start to take a dip or things become hard or we feel that things aren't fruitful or productive, we can get really anxious and worried. But like you said, reminding yourself that with the seasons comes, you know, death and then some a period of sort of hibernation and things developing underground that you can't see and then in spring you get these new shoots of new life and then things are blooming in the summer and then you go through the cycle again that's just yeah yeah it's powerful to realize and remember that right exactly exactly and autumn I always think it's interesting it's that sort of harvesting you know what are the good things you're going to take from from spring and summer and what you've learned this year and how can you kind of take those those forward I mean, I think there's just a whole bit about rest as well with with winter. We kind of force ourselves to, in J- January is the bit that I, I always find, uh, well, I, you know, fascinating because we're all meant to be like really energized and setting our goals for the year and having our New Year's resolutions. Well, I don't feel like that in January. Not good from Christmas. <laughs> yeah, eating too much cake. Yeah. Too much. I kind of feel like I should be out there getting fit and healthy again. But I don't want to. And it's not really, you know, it's, it's not until the sun begins to come out at this time of year that I begin to feel a bit more energised. And so sometimes I think it's about just respecting that a little bit and, and, you know, being aware of it, not beating ourselves up if we're not feeling super, super energised. Mm. And there's also that sort of thing in, in autumn, isn't there, that things need to be cut back and you need to prune and, and you know... yeah. And they need to go in order to make space for the new stuff to come. Yeah. Yeah. It's been loads of stuff. Loads of stuff you would get out of it. What, yeah. What sort of other metaphors have you found that coaches that you've worked with, obviously not breaking confidence or anything, but, you know, what, what other sorts of things that people really tend to find meaning in? I get, it really ver- it varies. I mean, there are some, there are things that I often questions I might ask in a coaching session around, you know, what are you drawn to or what, what are you noticing? And, and there are some obvious things like, 
stepping stone. <laughs> you know, that can often help us think about what steps do you want to take? Bridges, I think quite interesting. You know, what are you going from and to? But I think the one that that really kind of stick there is, I mean, I think trees offers so much. I've already mentioned that. But I did have one coaching session where the conversation was around fitting in a team and a place within the team. And actually, what was interesting, we weren't actually in the same locations. So we were doing this in different locations on the phone. But the the area that I was in was kind of clearing, but there were all of these different trees around. And they were all different, but they were all, they all had their place. And I reflected that back to the client and it re- really resonated with her because she really felt like, yeah, actually, finally, she, she was, she was finding her place and it, and it was different from other people, but, but it was, there was a quality there. And I think that's what nature brings as well as that. It's so, it's so diverse, you know, and we talk about diversity and inclusion so much and, and nature's, you know, the mirror there. All, all of these different species and plants living together, doing their thing, complementing each other. And I, th- I think that, you know, provides a lesson. And nature doesn't judge. Does not judge. It just accepts. And it keeps on growing. And then the other thing that just springs to mind, which has nothing to do with the coaching session, but I was having a walk with my son at the weekend. And he said to me, Oh, being being in nature, he said, it's like Mother Nature just helps open your heart and just warms your heart. That's a very emotionally intelligent little boy, Henry. I know. I know. Kids do generally like it when they get outside. I mean, there might be a lot of whinging before they go, but but when they yeah. when they get outside, away from screens, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, something shifts, doesn't it? Mm. And I think that is true. For adults, if we can keep ourselves away from our, our screens and, yeah. like you said, always having to input into our stuff into our heads. And I was really bad for that until quite recently. And this, I probably shouldn't be saying this on the podcast because right, I want people to listen to this podcast, right? But I, I always used to listen to a lot of podcasts, running, walking, whatever. And now I, I listen to far fewer because, yeah, I have realized the value of of silence and your own thoughts and processing. And I know that we get very little time to do that in our lives right now. And and it's much worse with smartphones, isn't it? Because, you know, when I was at university, and I have said this before on the podcast, but if you went to the, the post office to post a letter, because we used to write letters in those days, and I didn't have a mobile phone until I graduated, and you were in the queue, you'd just stand there. Mm. You just there wasn't anything else you could probably look around but just standing there you'd be processing the previous conversations that you'd had you'd maybe thinking about a lecture you'd been to things going on and that processing time is really really important it's when our brains are in our default mode network where we're starting to connect across hemispheres we might not necessarily think that we're being productive or thinking about anything in particular but our brains are always at work connecting and we need that switch off default time as well as we need the focus time but the default mode network is where we solve problems and I guess do you find that many of your coaching clients or even you when you're just walking you'll suddenly just get the answer to something just out of the blue yeah absolutely it just comes and I think when you, it's because we're kind of relaxed, I think. We're more relaxed anyway. We might still feel a bit stressed, but I think nature instantly sort of calms. And I think when we're in that relaxed space, that's when the, the gold comes up and the ideas pop up and they seem so sort of simple and, and obvious. So I think it, it, it there might just be something, in, something you see that just prompts something and it'll be totally different from, from what you would have thought about sitting at your at your desk or at your screen there's something about moving as well isn't there that's movement we know even just a small amount of movement even if you're walking like at two miles an hour you still are creating new connections in your brain and you've got that sort of growth hormone that's produced when you're when you're moving so yeah 
and that, and actually that's partly why I love coaching outdoors because coaching for me is all about movement. It's about moving, moving forward. And so, yes, all the physical benefits of that. And then, and then the opportunity to move forward on a particular challenge or, or an issue. And then there's also the power of when you're walking with someone, when you're side by side with someone, I don't know if you've noticed this. I've certainly noticed it with friends and then more so even with, with, with coaching clients. But there's something about being side by side that it makes it easier to talk about what's really going on, not just the kind of surface level chit chat, but the actual kind of the deeper stuff, the more emotional things. And I think being in that environment helps have those com- conversations there. And they're the ones where we really connect with each other as friends or as colleagues. And I think that's a, a lovely opportunity too. And how do you find that people's perspectives on stuff change by by being outside as compared to sort of being in a in an office, even just sat around a table? I think that's kind of one of the biggest things about being in nature is the, the perspective that it gives us. Because it changes our perspective. It makes us or it certainly makes me realise that we are part of something so much bigger than us. It's out of our control. And we you know, agonize over little things in our day to day or things that are frustrating us. And then actually you step out and you're like, am I going to be really thinking about this when I'm, you know, 90 years old looking back on my life? Is this what I'm going to think about? I mean, I don't know whether you experience this, or I'm interested to know whether others feel this, but when I think back to great memories in my life, they all seem to be connected to the outdoors. And especially childhood, I seem to have this sort of picture in my mind that my childhood was literally outdoors the whole time. Whether the weather was amazing back then and it's not now, or whether it's just the fact that being outdoors stimulates something else in us. I just think, Henry, there was less to do in the 80s. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Nothing on telly. I think you're right. It, it, it's a real perspective shifter. And it, I remember, you know, if I'm, if I'm walking around outside and there's this little niggle that I've been worried about, it's much easier just to say, F it. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, it, it, I hark back to an episode, I think it was one of our very first episodes with um, John C. Parkin, all about the, the F it books that he's written, which is really all about yeah. our attachment to the outcomes of things. I guess a, a, a more polite question to ask would be, what does it matter? What does it matter? And if you're, yeah, you're outside watching the birds and the trees, the trees that have been there for hundreds of years, it's like, you know what? This isn't going to matter tomorrow, let alone in a week's time, let alone in 20 years' time or 100 years. We spend a lot of our time trying to control everything. And I think nature helps us recognize that we are not in control at all. And that's okay. You know, things are going to change, things are going to evolve. Things are unknown. And if we can stay grounded within that, and I think nature helps you do that, I think that enables us to feel calmer and, and less stressed and to be more more creative. And I also thinking that just getting out, it is so, so important, particularly for people that, that listen to the podcast, because many people are stuck in, in hospitals, in, in those offices, you know, seeing patients, you can't, you can't do that outside, you know, so you're going to have to make time and, and make a bit of an effort sometimes, because often if you're living in a big city, it's, it's difficult to get out. Where would, where would you particularly suggest that people went to get the most out of it? What sort of, sort of nature are we talking about here? Well, I think just getting outdoors full stop is a good, good thing, wherever you are. There's a book by somebody called Ruth Allen called Grounded, and she talks about tiny green breaks. And that's literally spending five to ten minutes in in a green space, whatever that might be, or a blue space near a river or an ocean. So if you can, to just get somewhere where there's 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 a little bit of nature. But if you can't, if you're in a really urban environment, it doesn't matter. There will be na- there's nature all around. There are just birds flying in the in the sky. You know, just take a moment to go outside and breathe and see what you're see what you're drawn to. There's a I can put it on those show notes, but the there's a website called Street Wisdom, which is a guy called David Pearl. He set up little five minutes podcasts that you can listen to that just help you 
take spend five minutes out in an urban environment and he talks you through just a, it's a little bit like a guided meditation for five minutes and just help you kind of connect with your your environment wherever that is so it, even and this is a bit of a strange right if you're in your house all the time and you really can't get out and go for a walk if you're fortunate enough to have a garden to just literally just take your shoes off take, take your shoes and socks off and just stand on the grass for a minute and just connect that can be quite a grounding exercise to do and if none of those things are available even just listening to some bird sound and there's loads of stuff out there on the internet or what you know in my office I've got some pictures of of nature around and I literally just have to look at those for me to just get a bit of perspective and go back to my my task yeah wonderful advice in the Facebook group Quite recently, I posted a YouTube video of some bird song from a, an RSPB nature reserve. First thing in the morning, it's, it's beautiful. So we'll put that in the show notes as well for anyone who just wants to, to listen for, for two minutes. It's very, very relaxing. So yeah, you're right. There are, there are things that we can do and ways that we can do it. And that's really helpful, that street wisdom. So I think sometimes people that are quite new to coaching or self-coaching maybe need a little bit of guidance. So that's wonderful for the street wisdom thing. Yeah. Also, um, in a few episodes ago with Dr. Claire Kay, we did an episode about self-coaching and there's a guided self-coaching exercise that people could listen to as well. Yeah. But really, it's just sort of setting off. I mean, what, what top tips? If, if someone said, right, OK, I've been really inspired by this conversation with Henry. I'm going to go for a 20 minute walk. And they were sort of a bit novice at, at this. What would you advise them? What's the advice would you say? OK, what I suggest is do this. So I think the first thing would be as I said earlier, just to spend a minute or so just engaging your senses. So turn your phone off, go on your own if possible. If you can go on your own, great. If, you're, if you've got a dog, that's totally fine too. But if you can, just get, go on your own. Take a moment to just check in with yourself. Maybe ask yourself what's coming up for me today. And then, and then just actually don't, don't plan it too much. Just, just start walking and see what you're drawn to. It might be and a particular path takes your interest. You just start walking, walking down there. And then maybe ask yourself, why am I drawn to this? Or what, what is it about this that, that matters to me? What does this do for me? And how can it help me with any any challenges that I that I have? I think the most important thing is to just actually don't overthink it. Don't really think too, try to try initially. Don't think too much about questions. Just, just relax and just try and switch off your brain as much as you can, and just notice what's around you. Notice the the sounds that you're you're hearing. Notice the flowers. Notice the buildings. Notice the ground and your connection to the ground. And just do that. And and if it's only a five or ten minute thing, that's that's fine too. I think as with all of these things that help our well-being, so much of it is about habits and starting small. So I, I really think there's value in just literally just taking a, trying to do it, you know, if you don't do it at all, then do it, set a goal to do it once or twice in the week for five or ten minutes. Start small and build it up. And if it, you know, if you notice that it helps you, do it more. And if it doesn't, let it go. I love that. I think so often, particularly us healthcare professionals or professions that are very, very overstretched, overwhelmed, you know, any tiny break that we have or anything we do like this, we, we think it needs to be productive. It needs to be productive. I need to have an outcome at the end of it. But what you're saying is you don't need to achieve anything and actually, your, your brain will be working and connecting anyway, whether you feel like it's achieving anything or not. So it's worth just trying it and keeping it going for a few weeks. And, and I'm sure that people's mental health will improve and things will feel yeah. a lot better. Yeah, I mean, the, the World Health Organization published a report, I think it was last year, about the impact of green and blue spaces on mental health. I think they, they looked at over 134 studies around the benefits of being outside and it's just you know really conclusive in terms of helping with 
the whole gambit in terms of mental health, from just improving your mood on that day to more, more serious conditions that people have. All of the evidence and research is out there. So it's just about doing a little bit, not making it productive, just go with it. And, and even if you haven't got time to go on your own, if you've got, say, a, a meeting with someone, then even just making it a, a phone call and going for a walk while you do that phone call can be really helpful too, can't it? Definitely. In an ideal world, you go on your own and you turn everything off and you'd really be able to connect. But also, we've got real life. So if it's just about getting outside and moving and still doing, that's okay too. It's better than not doing that. So again, no judgment. <laughs> yeah. I, I hate it, but I would just invite everyone to to go outside as much as possible. Yeah. Even on a rainy day. Ooh, ooh. In the rain. <laughs> I guess the rain can teach you just as much as the sun, probably more, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I actually feel more invigorated if I go out on a, on a walk where I've been, I mean, I might not enjoy it so much at the time, let's be honest here, but when I get home, I feel, I feel more invigorated if I've been kind of soaked. And I think, oh, yeah, been out there, been out in the weather. And it's great. It's energizing. So it's really good to start small and anything is better than nothing. Yeah. I found that actually going away for, you know, longer periods of time, either a couple of days or even up to a week, somewhere completely different, somewhere where you are, feel, where you do feel much closer to nature. Say the mountains is one of my favorite things, mm -hmm. but also you know, in the UK, just in the woods and, and things like that. So I, I really enjoyed a lot of the re retreats that I've done in nature. And even if it's not a retreat, even just going away with some friends and going for a long walk, things like that. If someone wanted to do something a bit longer and use nature, are there any particular structures for that that you would recommend or things that they could do on a bit of a longer stay away? So I think on your on your own, there are lots of things you can do. You can go away for a weekend or maybe go with friends as well. And just build in a bit of outdoors activity during that time. So long walks, a couple of hour walks. That's just a really lovely reset, I think, that you can that you can do. And then you've got all the loveliness of being with friends and just relaxing and being in a different space. I think, like you said, it's really helpful to go somewhere different. So I love going to the to the sea and the, and the mountains, but you can, and you absolutely can do that in the UK without it being too too difficult. There's lots of good youth hostels out there. It doesn't have to be an expensive thing that you do. There's lots of websites like the Ramblers Association with information about guided walks and routes and things that you can take. And then there's more structured retreats, which I think there's a little bit more focus around connecting with your mind and body and, and, and really kind of working through something. And actually that's something that we've been, we've been looking at as well, Rachel. So, yeah, yeah. So we started talking about retreats a while ago with the podcast with Richard Pyle about finding your, your purpose in life and been talking to Henry for a long time. So I know Henry has wanted to do this and, and I've put out a call to say, if anyone's interested, let me know. And we had loads and loads of interest. So We've actually managed to book something in September in North Devon. It's a luxury glamp site. And we're hoping to put on a, a three-day retreat where you can come along, connect with people. It's going to be off air, off grid. And we're going to go for walks. We're going to sit around a fire. We're going to have good food. We're going to have lots of time for good conversations. And I think we're going to have some guided walking where we think about specific questions that you give us Henry is that right yeah yeah that's right so there'll be a bit of a bit of purpose to to the walks and you know people can come with something that they just want a bit of creative thinking time to to focus on whatever's important to them right now but also there'll be some free time and just some chill time and some different things that people can do and there will be wild swimming and hot tub because for me <laughs> any retreat has to include wild swimming and a hot tub so if you're interested, just just click on the link in the show notes to find out more. We'd love to see you there. But even if you uh, can't make it then and, and places are filling up really, really quickly, we'll do another one. But B, there are loads of different things, loads of different things organised. Not everybody can can use glamp sites and get out. I know that there are lots of other things around. 
do just have a look around and see what you want to do and like Henry said start small go away with some friends and ask yourself some questions actually one retreat I did every day they started off they had a load of cards which had different needs on them we just all stood around and we took one card that said what our need was for that day and for someone it was connection for someone it was a bit of empathy someone it was support someone it was being energized and that just let the group know what that person needed and people were able to come alongside them and go okay what what is it you need support with and do you want to talk about it and so immediately the depth of conversation really really increased so if you are doing it with friends or a group of you I mean obviously you don't want to be really weird (laughs) <laughs> but there are questions you can ask each other with permission to go a little bit deeper than the usual conversations. I mean, would you agree with that, Henry? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not kind of turn up with your retreat with the coaching handbook in the back pocket and, you know, kind of go through a list of questions. But I do think just being in nature just helps you have slightly deeper conversations. So I think, you know, yeah, play with it as well. Have fun. You know, this is it's just about bringing a bit of lightness into life. And, you know, reconnection and and getting away from what can be quite serious, stressful things that we have to deal with on a day-to-day business basis. So, yeah, like this. I think the great thing about retreat is you can sort of leave that stuff at the door when you get there. And you know it's going to be there when you get out, but, you know, and spend a few days just not not having to obsessively worry about it, but actually maybe look at it from different angles. And then you can go back and pick up what you want or what you, or leave what you don't want when you, when you go home. Yes. If someone was to want to start getting out to nature, maybe thinking about some self-coaching, solving a few problems. What three tips would you have for people who just want to get started? Just start with getting out for five minutes during the day. Literally, or even if you can't go for a walk, just five minutes standing outside, listening listening to, to nature. Take a tiny green break, as uh, Ruth Allen would, would call it, and take five, ten minutes out, outside. Take a moment to just ground yourself and notice your connection to the ground and then just see what it is that you want to to think about. See what comes up. Lovely. That is really simple and really great. All of us can do that. And I guess it's just about being a little bit more intentional when we do go out, even noticing when when your mind is floating off to that problem there or whatever and bringing it back to actually that that would be good to think about now. And I think like I said at the beginning, you know, we do spend a lot of time in our head. So when, we, when we're asking ourselves, you know, what do we want to think about? Maybe just go a bit further and ask yourself, and what am I feeling about this? Because our body will always have what it's tell us. And it's about tuning in and listening to that. Yeah, because often we think we're thinking one thing, our feelings can tell us something very different. So you go back into your feelings and then question that. So what is the reason I'm feeling like that? Oh, maybe this is the real mm. issue deep down. Mm. A lot of the time, it's something a bit deeper that's driving an emotional response in us. And it's, so it's just having that curiosity, that little bit of extra inquiry. What's going on for me now? Oh, well, Henry, that's been really helpful. Gosh, I'm very inspired to go for a walk now. <laughs> so really looking forward to the retreat in September. And yeah. if people can't make it in September, if it's successful, then we will run more. I think that's the plan, isn't it, Henry? Yeah, I hope so. That's absolutely what we want to do. That'd be brilliant. And Henry, I know that you do outdoor coaching, either face-to-face or on on the phone with people. If people wanted to get hold of you, how could they do that? They can do that through the show notes. I'll put my contacts, but I'm also henrystevenson.com, my website. uh, And there's a contact uh, form on there. So yeah, please do get in touch. Even if you just want to have an initial chat, we can do a walk and talk to have a chat first and see where we go. Brilliant. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being on. Love to get you back on because there's more stuff I know we need, we need to talk about in there. Yeah. Brilliant. I really look forward to that. Thanks for listening. Don't forget, we provide a self-coaching CPD workbook for every episode. You can sign up for it via the link in the show notes. And if this episode was helpful, then please share it with a friend. Get in touch with any comments or suggestions at hello at youarenotafrog.com. I love to hear from you. And finally, if you're enjoying the podcast, please rate it and leave a review wherever you're listening. It really helps. Bye for now.